And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I guess it stems back from the A-Team show, where I like taking a vehicle and modifying it and, you know, have something simple like maybe a forklift, but yet it has missiles and all kinds of other things added to it. That's a neat idea. And I think that's the driving idea here behind Toboggans of Doom, in which you are taking a toboggan and going down a hill which has anything from killing, I mean, killer Christmas trees to the abominable snowmen. And you are loading your sled up with different guns and such uh, and different things that will help you maneuver so that you can get around, above, or through these obstacles. The idea is really good. There's some really neat concepts in the game, but overall I think the game fails because it just isn't even. Let me show you a little bit about the game. The game is for two players. Each player starts the game with a set of your standard dice, a four-sided die, a six-sided die, an eight-sided die, a ten-sided die, a twelve-sided die, and a twenty-sided die. At the beginning of each round, players are going to roll their dice and then use these dice to purchase upgrades for uh, their toboggans. Now, upgrades come in different types. For example, here is an outrigger, and the cost down here is $6. So I need to look at my dice, and so, for example, here, I have a die that shows a 3, a 2, a 1, and a 1. I can add those, I'm sorry, a 3, a 2, and a 1. I can add all three of those together and pay the $6 to buy this. If I had a die that just said 6, I could also purchase it once I have used the die to purchase something, I can no longer use it. Some things like this flamethrower is a D12, which means you simply pay your 12 set of die no matter what number's on it. And in case you don't have what you need to buy something for your vehicle, you can always do anything that's necessary, and that's basically give up all the rest of your dice that you have left over to take one tile of your choice. So even if your only die left over was a four set of die, you can take anything you want. But you're taking turns purchasing, so probably the really good stuff will be gone by that time anyway. But it's a really neat mechanic. These dice are not gone yet. At, at the beginning of the game, you're going to set up the obstacle course, and you're basically putting these obstacles in three rows that are going to go down in actually uh, three columns that are made up of ten rows. And I'm not going to build the whole board here, but at the beginning of each round, one player is going to start... Um, on one of these three columns and they're gonna ride down that column so they turn it over so for example they they turn over this one the mad scientist university and this is an obstacle that requires you to go around it and you can see that in the little blue arrow on the side there showing going around there's three different kinds of upgrades or obstacles you're gonna meet and for those you'll need matching upgrades for example the flamethrower I showed you allows you to go through objects that's what the red arrow means the outrigger here allows you to go around objects. Uh, that's what the blue arrow means. And then the yellow arrow on this portable ramp allows you to go over objects. Then there are a few upgrades, for example, like this turbo booster, which allow you to go over or through objects. A uh, pretty neat thing. But if you don't, for example, if I drew this Mad Scientist University, it's an object you need to go around, and I didn't have an upgrade that allows me to go around, well, then I'm already out. But let's say I don't have to worry about that. Then my opponent rolls a dice mentioned here in the card. In this instance, it's a D8 or a D10, his choice of which one he rolls. And then I roll the dice on my cards. And when you're going around an object, as if I'm the one sledding down a hill, I need to roll lower than the number that is produced by the card. If it's an object that I'm going over, for example, this barbed wire fence, then I need to get a number that's higher than the numbers on the card. And if I'm going through one, like this poacher's net, then I need to roll between the two numbers that are on the card. For, so for this one, it's a D10 and 2. So if on the D10, a 4 is rolled, you need to get between 2 and 4. And 2 and 4 both count. And so there's lots of dice rolling in the game. As soon as you mess up, you're basically out of that round, and the other player gets his turn. But any time that you do turn over a new tile that hasn't been seen before, you get a victory point. Also, the tiles are split up into groups. There's three, and then there's another three, and then there's four. Once you make it past the first three, you'll get extra points depending on what round it is. Once you get past the next three, you get points. And once you get past the last three, well, you win as long as you're the first person to do so. Otherwise, the person with the most points is the winner of the game. The artwork on the cards is pretty funny. Like even here, you can see in the poacher's net, that's the Coca-Cola bear. And, you know, there's, there's just little things that 
are interesting throughout the game. The idea of the game is really interesting. I like using the dice to purchase the different cards, the different upgrades. The idea of buying upgrades is a lot of fun. With only two players, you'll at least get one upgrade that you like a lot, and you have a chance to build up your sled and have different upgrades to go through different obstacles around them or over them. The idea of going around through and, and, and under or uh, over obstacles and trying to roll higher, lower, or between two numbers, that's also a good mechanic, and also with these dice. So the whole thing sounds really good. But where it falls apart for me is the fact that these obstacles are just ridiculously mismatched. Some of them are just too difficult. And it's not that hard to have three difficult obstacles in, in a row, which means no one is going to get past them. Or, for example, if you really don't have something that allows you to go over very well, your opponent bought the best ones every time and you really don't get a chance to buy them, and, and, and you just keep rolling poorly, you're never going to make it down the mountain. Every game I've played so far, no one has made it all the way down the mountain. And I'm not even sure if it's pot. Okay, I know it's possible with the numbers and stuff, but it's really difficult. And I don't even mind that. But the fact is, we kept dying in the first three cards. They were annoying. You make a, a, a failed roll, you're done. There is no second chance. Well, there's an upgrade that gives you a second chance. But other than that, you mess up, you're done. And it keeps the game fast and interesting. Although the purchasing part of the game takes longer than everything else. You purchase, you build, you get your sled ready, go. Th -th -th -th, you're done. Th -th -th, you're done. And so it's an interesting game, but I really felt like the cards and everything else wasn't balanced, wasn't play tested enough to, to just come out the way it should be. Some of the numbers were just really strange. And some of the cards, you know, for example, if on, on this Mad Scientist University, I can roll an eight sided die or a 10 sided die. And you ha and the person who is rolling down the hill under toboggan, they have to roll lower than the number I roll. Why would I roll the 10-sided die? That just doesn't make sense. I'm going to always roll the 8-sided die because there's the chance of them getting a lower number is higher on that one. It just, things like that. I, I, I don't always understand what the point of it is. But for, <laughs> good tiles, good artwork, a, a neat idea, a great theme. I give them points for that. It just doesn't come together good enough for me to recommend it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.